Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hello once again and uh, welcome to the Vicarage and to this week's talk for St John's in Highbridge. Let's begin with a prayer. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. This week marks the beginning of Christian Aid Week, and I will put a link in the um, description of this week's video. Um, and if you'd like to contribute to our um, fundraising for Christian Aid um, this year, we're going to try and raise £300 um, and there's a way that you can give online. Um, last year we smashed through that target, I'm pleased to say, so let's see if we can do the same this year. Um, but if you'd like to support the work of Christian Aid, then please do um, click that link and give generously if you can. So our readings today, we um, have uh, I'm really principally talking about um, John's Gospel, chapter 13, um, this week. And my talk is called Love, Our Secret Weapon. Love is our secret weapon. Call me an idealist, call me a dreamer. But in a world of destruction and death, we need love more than ever. The path of love, it seems to me, is a courageous path. Some would say a foolhardy one. And it's a path less travelled than those of violence and fear, but in the end it's the only path that makes sense. Money might dry up, homes and lifestyles and culture might be threatened, but love endures forever. In a village in Zimbabwe lives Janet Zurugo with her husband John. Janet is age 70 and she has 10 children, 28 grandchildren and 8 great-grandchildren. Janet has seen firsthand the destruction caused by drought, drought exacerbated by climate change. One year there was so little food, Janet says, rains had not fallen, we ate things which we wouldn't normally eat in normal times. I made porridge and gave it to the children, then removed a portion and put it down for the dogs. The children picked up the dogs' share because they weren't full. When I saw this, I knew the situation had become unbearable. My heart was so painful thinking that my family would die. By God's grace, we did not die. We soldiered on. According to the United Nations, Africa is the continent most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, despite the fact that it contributes only 4% of global carbon emissions. It's the fault, then, of the big industrialised powers, and I'm afraid that means us. So we are part of the problem, but we are also part of the solution. Through local partners supported by Christian Aid, Janet has benefited from a programme which empowers the uh, most vulnerable communities like hers in Zimbabwe. And the programme helps local people to prepare for and to adapt to the harsh and changing climate. Janet now has drought resistant seeds and training to help her cope. This project is lifting, her, lifting us up we are thankful, she says. Christian Aid say this, These drought-resistant seeds are now blooming into a garden of plenty, bowls full of ground nuts, wild fruit, golden corn, a rainbow of colour. The new storeroom Janet has built helps her keep her harvest safe and secure, which help her, helps her bounce back in future droughts. God gives me the power to plough my field, to help my family, she says simply. And the power she's speaking about is love. Love is the secret weapon of this remarkable and powerful woman 
and it's our secret weapon too. In today's Gospel, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. C.S. Lewis wrote of four kinds of love. The first love is a kind of affection, like we'd have for a cherished relative or even for a pet. The second love is the love of friendship. It's that faithful, enjoyable, companionable love that friends share. The third love is erotic or romantic love, the kind that all the love songs are written about, the kind of love that knocks you off your feet. Each of these three loves, Lewis says, has its virtues and its vices. Each can be pure and beautiful, or it can be twisted into something smothering or obsessive. But the fourth kind of love that Lewis describes is the purest and the highest of all. This kind of love contains the virtues of all the other three loves and more. It's what the New Testament calls agape, and which the Old Testament calls chesed. It's the kind of love that reaches into those unselfish realms of joy and sacrifice. It's a disinterested, self-giving love. It's love, as it were, on its knees with a towel around its waist. It's what used to be meant by the word charity. Nowadays, of course, charity largely brings to mind um, campaigns and organisations and finance. Yes, a bit like Christian Aid Week. But I suspect that all charitable organisations, you know, began not with collection buckets or direct debits. I'd be willing to bet that they all started with love. That agape love, which is the highest of all. It's worth remembering that this Christian Aid Week, and indeed every week, if our financial giving is not done out of love, then it is, as St Paul puts it, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Loveless giving might appear virtuous to the dull ears of the world, but to God, who knows the secrets of our hearts, it's a jarring sound, like, like two notes that are out of tune with each other. So I would ten times rather have a poor church that is rich in love than a rich church that is loveless or that only plays at loving. Thankfully, a loving heart tends to lead toward generosity and service because it, it just can't help itself. That's the way that it ought to be. Love first and ask questions later. Now there's a reason for the primacy of love. And it's a theological reason. The reason is to be found in the nature of God, as revealed in Jesus Christ. God is love. 1 John 4 verse 8. If we were to rip out all the other words from our Bibles and be left with just those three words, we'd still pretty much have all that we need to know. But you know, I'm glad that we don't rip everything else out because the Bible, along with its warts and all account of the human story, also contains the perfect parable of God's love, the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Most people don't believe it or give it a second thought, but we do. In the last couple of years, last couple of years, last couple of hundred years, there's been a shift in our society from the belief that God is love to the belief that love is God. It's the subtlest of shifts. But do you see, do you see the difference? Saying that love is God allows us to define what love is and does 
and looks like. Seeing that love is God allows us to hold back those things and people that we find it hard to love because we are holding love's cards close to our chest. Seeing that love is God allows us to stay with the lower kinds of love and avoid the painful vulnerability of agape. But saying God is love changes everything. Putting God, as it were, first in the equation allows God to define what love is and does and looks like, not us alone. For left to our own definitions, love can be a rather impoverished thing. But it doesn't need to be. God has defined love for us, precisely and eternally in Jesus Christ. See as they strip the robe from off his back and spread his arms and nail them to the cross. The dark nails pierce him and the sky turns black and love is firmly fastened onto loss. But here a pure change happens on this tree. Loss becomes gain. Death opens into birth. Here wounding heals and fastening makes free. Earth breathes in heaven and heaven roots in earth. And here we see the length, the breadth, the height where love and hatred meet and love stays true. Where sin meets grace and darkness turns to light, we see what love can bear and be and do. And here our Saviour calls us to his side. His love is free. His arms are open wide. God's love then is our secret weapon. It lies hidden in the pages of our Bible and fastened onto our crucifixes and expressed in poems like Malcolm Gates. It lies hidden in the worship of the church that for most people is little more than a quaint eccentricity. But we have an opportunity, people of St John's, to let love shine out through our life. Think of it like this. The love of God is like a beam of sunlight that travels from an unseen source and extends beyond the horizon. We get to stand in the path of that beam and allow that quickening ray to pass through our lives. If we are closed and opaque to our own needs and to the world's needs, then that light will only reveal the contours of our selfishness. But the more openly that we love Jesus and the more openly that we love our neighbour, the more his love shines through us the more translucent we are to its rainbow colours and the more beautiful are the reflections that it casts upon a world in despair. So this Christian Aid week, let's hear Jesus' words in John 13 and the testimony of those like Janet, not only as an incentive to give, but as an invitation to love. In all that we are, let us invite Jesus to shine through us again. Amen.